Hello and welcome to the Banker's Masterclass series. I'm Silvia Pavoni, Economics Editor of the Banker, and I'm in Porto, Spain, in Trinidad and Tobago, to talk about the country's financial sector, its role within the economy, and its plans to grow as an international financial centre. I'm joined by the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Basan Barat. Thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure. To th welcome to Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. So the economy of Trinidad and Tobago is mainly driven by the oil and gas sector. Uh, but there are also other sectors which are growing in importance, um, such as, for example, the financial sector, but also the manufacturing sector. Um, what is your ministry's um, policy in terms of uh, uh, helping to diversify this economy? Well, um, you're quite right. Fin um, the oil and gas sector has um, really contributed significantly to the economy over the years. In fact, it's uh, close to about 50% of our uh, gross revenues and about 85% of our exports. So it's quite significant to GDP. However, as a direct result of that dependence, uh, we have gone as a country um, in many instances into what's called boom and bust economics. So when the price of oil and gas is high on the international market, our economy does well when the price of oil and gas is uh, at a low, um, then of course the revenue streams coming into the country are lowered and we are not able to support the social programs that we have nor develop the economy as we would like to. Um, and so therefore the government took a concerted effort uh, two or three years ago to look at the diversification of the economy into other areas that we felt uh, that either we had a competitive advantage today or we could develop a competitive advantage. And um, financial services happens to be one of them. We have a very robust um, financial services sector, uh, predominantly um, with, through our banking sector, insurance sector, credit unions. And so we felt that what we would like to do is, in as much as we have a fairly mature sector already, um, we could use that as a major platform to look at other kinds of financial services. So you have uh, a number of international investors present in uh, Trinidad and Tobago and for many years. Uh, for example, a couple of the Canadian banks come to mind. Um, what, are the, um, what do you think are the main points that the country should do to encourage even more foreign investors um, in the financial sector? Um, well, it doesn't relate just to the financial services sector. Um, simply uh, put, there is a significant and has been a significant amount of bureaucracy in our system and at the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Investment. We've spent the last 18 months uh, looking at the ease of doing business indicator as determined by the World Bank. Two years ago we ranked at 97th in the world out of 139 countries. Today we're up at 66 and I'm hopeful that by the end of 2014 we'll be much closer to 50. Now what does that mean? That means that an, as, as an investor uh, the government could put in place all of the um, legal protections, can put in place uh, the incentives, but if it's difficult to do business once you get here, of course uh, it comes to naught. So we're working hand in hand with the World Bank to ensure that uh, we remove a lot of the bureaucratic obstacles, at the same time putting in place the legislation uh, that will allow it, that will allow these uh, sectors to thrive um, once uh, the investors come in. So a good example was last year, uh, both Scotiabank and RBC wanted to put uh, some of their back office functions in Trinidad and we were able to go to Parliament and change pieces of legislation, amend certain major pieces of legislation for example uh, the Value Added Tax Legislation, the Free Zones Act, Corporation Tax Act to allow the benefits uh, to accrue to these organizations by putting them, by, by actually locating their operations here so in Trinidad. So definitely a country that is open <coughs> for business, which is what the Trinidad Tobago has been renowned on yes. for. And, uh, and having the nimbleness and the flexibility yes. to be able to cater for the investors. Which needs. is absolutely true. Everybody seems to know everybody within the financial sector and probably absolutely. the whole country. Yes. Um, now, given the importance of, it, obviously, as we said, <coughs> of the oil and gas sector, I'm presuming that there has to be also focus on the interaction between the financial sector and the oil and gas or other parts of the economy. Uh, what you, what, how, where would you like the financial sector to go in terms of supporting the other areas of the economy? Well, there are several areas for, that's carded for diversification. Uh, financial services, ICT, the tourism sector, creative industries, which uh, for us incorporates uh, film, fashion and music, uh, agro-processing, and uh, downstream energy services as well as um, the maritime sector. So there's several 
um, areas for diversification. Financial services represents one of the strongest ones simply because we already have a developed platform. We already have a, a relatively deep and mature market. We are seen as the financial uh, sector of the, car of, the, of, the, of the hemisphere, essentially. Uh, we have a, a fairly sophisticated capital market here in Trinidad and Tobago in terms of our stock exchange and so on. So um, that presents the most immediate um, ability to, to actually um, take advantage of this particular sector. And so therefore that's why we put a tremendous amount of emphasis on ensuring that we create the environment for the financial services sector. And that's why we're putting a lot of um, emphasis on it. Aside from oil and gas and the financial sector, what other sectors would you like to see growing which have the potential to um, support the economy as it's one of the, developed? One of, the, one of the major areas that we believe um, has a significant amount of potential almost to rival um, oil and gas in terms of its revenue streams is the maritime sector. Uh, we happen to be um, blessed in terms of our geographic location. Um, we are in a very sheltered part of the world so that whereas many other Caribbean countries would suffer for example from hurricanes and earthquakes we don't and we have not for certainly the last hundred years. Uh, that presents us with a great opportunity uh, to encourage the maritime sector, the yachting um, uh, fraternity. Uh, but also, um, because of our geographic location, we have several thousand ship voyages taking place just 20, 25 um, nautical miles off our coast. Many of those ships never stop in Trinidad and Tobago. They're on their way to Brazil and other parts of South, Central and Latin America. And what we want to do is to encourage those vessels to either stop off in Trinidad and Tobago as a transshipment port or for dry docking facilities. Um, particularly with the advent of the opening up of the Panama Canal, uh, we see much larger vessels coming through the canal and so therefore there are no facilities in this part of the world to service those vessels. Many of those vessels will have to go back to Asia for servicing mm -hmm. and in many instances the cost of the fuel outweighs the cost of the repair. So we feel that we are uh, very strategically located to take advantage of that new industry so to speak. And what is the sector that is really underperforming where a lot of attention needs to be put? Um, I think that uh, the one area that we have a unique advantage over um, any other country would certainly be in our creative industry sector. Um, as you would know, uh, the creative industry sector, which is film, fashion and music, um, has the potential to generate you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars, but more importantly, create thousands of jobs. What has happened thus far is that that sector has, has uh, been allowed to develop in a very unstructured, unorganized way. And those who have succeeded in those sectors have done so um, really from the sweat of their own brow rather than any developed program that governments have put in place. We're now trying to put a structure in place to develop uh, those sectors through encouraging young people to get involved uh, so that they see it as a pathway to, and, and as a genuine career um, where they could be successful and lots of money, you know, have opportunities to go abroad, um, as opposed to them uh, fi struggling to make a living in it um, and, you know, one in a hundred or one in a thousand might succeed. We want to, we want to create those pathways so that they can all be almost guaranteed success like in any other profession. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your comments. It's my pleasure.